All right, welcome to the next episode of the Rap Thought Podcast. And today we have a special guest with us. Um, he's a uh, artist, he's a musician, songwriter. Um, he sings, along with plays instruments, also raps on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta throw that out there. Yeah, we just, no, we just heard that. it. Yeah, I do. We just heard it. We just heard it. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got James Tower with us. Uh, you can find him on Spotify, James Tower and the Who Cares. He just put out an EP not too long ago. Um, and yeah, so we're excited to have our first guest. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is rad. Yeah, man. Straight out of quarantine. Yeah, right. That's, that's our first pod, yeah. podcast <laughs> straight out of album straight out of quarantine. Straight out of quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're maintaining our distance here and there. Yeah, yeah. so I'm really excited to have a guest and then also, I love the album that James uh, picked out for us. Uh, I think it's cool that he picked an album that neither of us have heard before, and I'm sure most listeners haven't heard before. You don't know if I haven't heard it before? I know, I know for sure. Wait, yeah, have you, had you heard it? Before? I haven't heard. Okay. It <laughs> it's like, wait, hold up! I will not be judged, but yeah. no, it's true. I haven't heard it before. Yeah. But it's interesting because, like, with Danger, I haven't. I don't know Danger Mouse by name, to mm-hmm. be completely honest. But I am familiar with his work, though. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, being pointed out, hey, that's the other half of Gnarls Barkley. Um, he's done work with Nora Jones, Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know, songs that I've heard right. before. So yep. I just, I didn't know it. He also yeah. wrote Feel Good Incorporated. Wow. He, yeah, I saw that he, he yeah, he did some work with, uh, with the Gorillaz. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. He produced that first Oh, yeah, he produced that whole album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, so I first heard about Danger Mouse from Danger Doom. The album yes. he did with MF Doom. That yeah. was one of my favorite albums when it came out. Yeah. I love that album. MF Doom, my, my favorite MC, probably. Yeah. Mm. I actually remember where I bought that CD. I bought that CD at Borders. I don't even remember. Uh, of Dude, course, I remember. Yeah, yeah. And it was probably like twenty five bucks for the CD. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh yeah. Oh man, I love that album. But and then I knew he produced the Gorillas out, the second Gorillas album. Uh-huh. But after that, I didn't really keep in touch. With Wouldn't you say "Feel Good" is most arguably like the most like recognizable gorilla song or like the most that along with Clint Eastwood Clint Eastwood, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those, right. the, yeah. those, those are the those are the songs you know right? those are the yeah. songs you know and Dan the Automator did the first Gorillaz album right and then Danger Mouse did the second one yep mm-hmm. which is like really cool way for gorillas to like switch producers but still stay Keep in that there. same lane of totally. sampling and all that right uh, super dope yeah and then when Gnarls Barkley dropped yeah that song. I actually never like, listened to that album. Of course, I've heard that song, but I've never. You've never listened to the full album. Mm-hmm. The album's good. It's Boogie good. Man is probably my favorite yeah. song on that. I used to the vibe whole, to dude, that song. Yeah. The yeah. whole album time. is good. They're yeah. all pretty much bangers. Like, yeah. um, and Crazy is now like the most one of the most covered songs. Right. It's yeah. Um, do you guys are you guys familiar with the Gray album? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that one I have and I've listened to quite a bit. That actually that's one of the albums along with. Um, Life After Death Star that got me into uh, mixed albums where you take two different artists and yeah, stuff. Mashup. Mashup albums, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a solid, yeah. it sounds like a real album. It well, really yeah, I mean, and you know the story with Grey Album, right? Tell. So the story with Grey Album was Danger Mouse is like trying to, he was, he was just messing around. Like he literally made the Grey Album for his homies. Like he just made a mi- mashup for, he was experimenting just for friends. He had no rights to any of the songs on either the J. So for the listeners, the Great Album is a mashup album that Danger Mouse created, uh, which is half mashup of the the Black Album by Jay Z, by Jay Z, mm-hmm. and the White Album by the Beatles. And so for me as a kid, when I heard the, when I heard that, it came out 2000, 2004. So I was like f- fifteen, something like that, and. Yeah. Um, and so when that came out, those are like my two worlds colliding. Like I grew up on Beatles and hip hop and like those right. two types of yeah. like and being mashed up. So he didn't have any rights to any of the songs. Mm-hmm. And 2014 was when like LimeWire was like hot. Hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember LimeWire. Everyone was on LimeWire. I remember, yeah, everyone was on LimeWire. I remember the viruses off LimeWire. Yes, yeah. totally. <laughs> I remember crashing some computers off LimeWire. Yeah. What were you downloading on? Yeah. <laughs> albums. 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 Of songs. Lots of albums, Mom. <laughs> um, yes. I downloaded finals. Um, no, and so he didn't have any of the rights to any of those songs. And it, his friends loved it so much they started sharing it. And it was like... The number one LimeWire, one of the most downloaded albums ever off Lime, LimeWire. And wow. he got so much heat for it mm-hmm. because both 
the Beatles people and the Jay Z people were coming after him. Right. And they like he got his ass sued like crazy. But how he's not making any money off of it. No, but it, it's it's being distributed and it's right. like promote. It's being promoted. Uh, yeah. He didn't make any money, but he, that's why he got away with it because he didn't sell it. Hmm. Right. But it was one of the most downloaded illegal albums of all time. Um, Crazy. And that was right after Ghetto Pop Life, the album we're talking about now. Right. So this came out before. So yep. For for everyone listening, we're doing an episode on. Danger Mouse and Gemini the Gifted One, Ghetto Pop Life. Yes. Um, so I think it's really interesting that this was Danger Mouse's, was this his first like full album that he did produce wise? Produce yeah. Wise? yeah. Wow. Hmm. And already like he, the production on this album is incredible. It's crazy. Like, he was already developed and knew what he was doing and knew the kind of sounds he wanted to use. Yep. Um, which is one of my favorite parts about this album. And to me, it felt like this, this album to me signifies like a, a beautiful bridging of the gap between 90s hip hop where it was a lot of like old school funk and R&B samples and a lot of those influences right. um, and then into more modern hip hop. Like this to me, this album is like a precursor to like college dropout. Like right. that, that kind of where music started because it was started bridging from the old school hip hop to new school hip hop mm -hmm. and how that kind of flowed together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was cool. This is 2004, right? 3. So it came out originally 2003 and then they released the extended version in 2004. Okay. When I was listening to this, I definitely got feels of the mid 90s yeah. when he was flowing and everything like that. Totally There's at the end of one of his tracks, I think it was Omega Supreme. Um, it was just I, I thought of like 93, 94 totally. kind of raps kind yeah. of thing. It's just that that yeah. flow that just all together that, I don't know, it was cool. It was, but it he was made really it modern, like the way he sung on some of the tracks, like did the hooks and like the way he, they formulated the songs made it a little more modern right? and not so much 90s hip hop. Like, he, like you said, he bridged the gap and went and took it a little bit further. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy this album. I like this was a super dope album. It was cool. It. And I'm, I'm so surprised that I didn't know about this album earlier on. Yeah. I was, I was such a head in hip hop and I was really digging, but then I thought about it today. I was like, why haven't I heard about this album? And I think it was because I was more focused on West Coast yep. hip hop. And this is very much an East Coast album. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I did, I, it didn't come across my radar for some reason. Jim, when did you come across? When did this so, first hit you? I have a cool story with this album. So I <laughs> so I first came across the album. I one of my first jobs was I worked at the ice cream parlor, like scooping ice cream. That's cool. And I worked with this dude. I was like, let me see, I was probably like 15 at the time. And I worked with this dude who was probably like 19, 20. And he was the dude that would get me my weed. <laughs> I think his name was I think his name was Jason. Dude, they can't snitch on on air. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it's legal alias. now, bro. It's legal. It's alias is what? It's alias is Jason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, no, so J I, I, Jason and I bonded. I look back on it now, and I'm like, dude, I was like 15. This dude was like 19, hanging out with the smoking weed, giving weed to a 15 year old when he's 19, and like, yeah, I was yeah. like, that's some weird stuff to look back on. But anyway, I remember he, he kind of tipped me off on this album. And I was like super, super into the underground um, hip hop scene at that point. And full circle, I got introduced to that album. And then I started, I left the ice cream parlor and I started working at the original Tower Records location in Sacramento, oh, which is where I'm from. Okay. So I worked at the original Tower Records. And I had this kid come in one day and he bought this album. And he was this young kid. He was younger than me. I was like 16 or 17 at the time. And I don't know. He was maybe like the age when I first listened to this album. Mm -hmm. So he came in and he has this one album that he's like looking to buy. And I looked at him and I was like, hey, man. I was like, have you listened to this album before? I can't remember what the album was. But he was like, oh, no. You know, I, I just got into hip hop. I'm like trying to. I was like, well, do you mind if I make some suggestions based on what you're buying? Like, I think there are some things that you might like. So I gave this kid some suggestions. And one of the suggestions was this album, Ghetto Pop Life. 
So he bought like the three other albums I suggested, bought them. Flash forward to years later, I'm in college. I come back home, Sacramento, and I needed to buy some gear at, at Guitar Center. I was playing some show and I needed to get some gear. Went and got some gear. This kid was helping me at, at, um, at Guitar Center, helped me get all this stuff. Cool, I'll get this. Yeah, yeah, I'll get that. And then we go to get rung up. And I was, I knew I was planning on spending around like 300 bucks or whatever. Rings it up, it's like 150 bucks. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I think there's a mistake here. Like, blah, blah, blah. And the kid's like, you don't remember me, do you? I'm oh, like, well. shit. <laughs> and I was like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? He's like, bro, he's like, I came in, you used to work at Tower Records on Broadway. He's like, I came in one time and you recommended all these hip hop albums and they completely, one of them being Ghetto Pop Life. It's like, and it completely changed everything for me. I'm now a producer and I, like an engineer and a hip hop producer and engineer. And this is like years later. And he's like, wow. so I, you changed my life for me. So I had to give back somehow. So I'm giving you my employee discount. <laughs> and that was, crazy. yeah, just from this recommendation at Tower Records, like years later, wild. it came back and he re- remembered me, recognized me. Yeah. Yeah, so you still connect with them or no? I have no idea where yeah. he is, dude. I have no idea. Just like I have no yeah. idea where Jason is. Jason. 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 Yeah. Jason. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. wild. So, so for me, like something like that, like it reinforces why we all love music in the first place, right? Mm-hmm. How it can create these bonds. It can have that impact. And, yeah, and that kind of impact. And yeah. so, yeah, and, and we've t- touched on that, especially when we did the Below the Heavens album, because that's an album that changed my life, right? Um, it's it's, but it wasn't how someone no one gave that album to me I just discovered it on the yeah. forums online um, but in, in any sense like that album changed my life and that's why I love doing this is because having discussions with people like you who can tell these stories or how an album affected you and we can talk about it and relate that because I think a lot of people can relate to this this kind of stuff they just yeah. may not have the platform or even think to talk talk about it music yep. is that bridge and that's super cool you know yep. over some yeah. dude you never met yep. and he remembered you because that album really impacted him that yep. much you know totally. just off of a 19 track album yep um, exactly it's awesome because music's so subjective you yep. don't know what how it all hit someone else I think the other album I recommended was Mad, v- Mad Villain nice. Mad Villain oh, that's a classic yeah yeah Oh yeah, mm. that, that might be an album we have to do later. Yeah, we'll put that on the list. Yeah, that's I don't a good album. Yeah. It's not. I don't think so. All right. All right. Well, with that said, let's get into the album. Yeah. Um, let's start off with Born at MC. Yeah. So, so the, in the beginning, it feels like very churchy, doesn't it? Yeah. It's got a lot of like church elements, and it's like it feels like they're trying to say like this is our sermon like listen to our sermon as well. definitely get that that gospel right and I like that's what you know ghetto pop life going into that song not yet but um, I definitely got that gospel feel yeah in, in parts during the album mm-hmm. and so it was cool it's kind yeah, of I thought it was really interesting how he started off with the song and then went into an intro mm-hmm. and then went into the you know um, ghetto pop life totally self titled album so Definitely the different. intro is not the first song. Right. Yeah. It's definitely like, it's different. Well, and yeah. I and you could see I could definitely see how Danger Mouse was experimenting and doing things his own way with the production in terms of the track listing and yeah. how he formulated it. Um, but I thought it was a dope way to start off the album, high energy, uh, introduce Gemini, because he's fairly unknown. Yep. He's put out a project before this, but but it was the crazy thing is the project he put out was ninety five. Right. And so this album been, came out two thousand three. Right. So he's basically reintroducing himself yeah. all over again. Yeah. Um, and I love that he he's just expressing what being a rapper and an MC means to him. He's like, yep. I'm born to do this. This is what I meant to do, even though I haven't been around for seven years. And it's cool because he maintains that energy throughout the entire album. Totally. Like we've yeah. talked about that in other albums where, you know, there's a mix of they're talking about a concept and then they go into building themselves up. But, you know, and I feel like in times we've not ripped on it, but we've just talked about like, eh, he's just going in about this, not a whole lot of substance. But I feel like when you kind of premise your album about that and just that mm-hmm. high energy going mm-hmm. more, it's like, okay, cool. Like right. he set the tone and I'm, yeah. I rock with that the entire way through definitely compared to uh, the Jordan Lucas album where he kind of sets you up for something that's going to be really deep and meaningful with the content Mm -hmm. in terms of ADHD right but then the songs don't match up with that Mm -hmm. I feel like 
with this album, it's not a lot of deep content. It is no, there. It's, it's there. not at all. There's That's some the there, I like about but he doesn't it set there. you up for it. Oh yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It gets there eventually. It's, it dabbles in it. It, yeah. it dabbles in it, but he doesn't set you up for. There's gonna be a lot of content, right. and there's not. It's he sets you up just for a hip hop album. Right. You know, he's rapping dope beats, dope rhymes. Yeah. Like that's what you're getting out of this. And he starts off with I'm an MC. Yeah. Like I'm born to rhyme. And I'm gonna- And it's a super simple song. Like it's yeah. there's not a lot of like there's not a lot of lyricism in it. It's 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 just that born an MC. Right. It's just that like, you know. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Alright, and then going into the ghetto pop life intro. Um just kind of some strings and stuff like that. It kind of leads you into the ghetto pop life song yeah, setting you up and everything yeah for the next track yeah um yeah the ghetto pop life the title track uh it was cool i mean i don't know if i look too deep but i always like to look for you you named your album this so what are we going to get from this right totally and so you know like we were talking earlier you get that gospel feel um he came in he's prepared to you know come in and rock with i liked his his uh his chorus uh, bullets in the clip, lyrics to spit, yeah. giving bitches good dick. Yeah, yeah. the wall to leave you six feet deep. So like, yes. it's just he's just having a good time with it and just having at yeah. it. And so, but it, it's it's cool. It's just this kind of like the pop life of living this lavish lifestyle, but in a ghetto sense of right. totally. all it's these raw. things. Yeah. It's it's and pretty raw. It's pretty yeah. uncut, um, yeah. and that's what you get throughout the album. So I really like that and. I don't know. I liked it. It was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, uh, it's it's interesting because the I, speaking of the bridging between the '90s hip hop into like more of a modern era, like I feel like early hip hop will all, all attracted us to it were the rhyme schemes and the playfulness mm-hmm. and not really even digging into like deeper things. Right. Kind of Tupac like went into that a little bit later in the '90s and like that started kind of developing, but. This, this album is like what we were talking about before. It's it's a little bit of both. Like it's more like I can be playful, but it dabbles in these these bigger right. concepts. He throws them out at you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I got the sense of he he wants to be taken seriously as an MC, but he he doesn't want his, all of his lyrics to be taken so seriously. Right. He's having fun with it. He's being a little tongue in cheek sometimes. Yeah. But he wants to be taken seriously in terms of his skill. Yeah. And what his abilities as an MC. Yeah. And, you know, to the point of being taken seriously, that's where he's in track three being call me Omega Supreme. Yep. I am <laughs> the best here. I'm yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, but you know what, man? There's some things that kind of caught my eye. There's a biggie lyric where, you know, he's talking about girl so fine or something. Like, I want to, I'd suck on her daddy's dick. Yeah. And I get, you know, to, cause she respects the dad so much. So like yeah. one of them is like spur him in his eye. Cause he's on his own dick. Yeah. yeah spur him in his eye. Cause I'd be on my own dick. I'm on my own dick. Yeah. I'm Omega Supreme. Uh, it's just, <laughs> st- <laughs> yeah. that line. Every time I hear it, man, I'm glad you bring that up. Cause yes. that always gets yeah. me. Man. I, yeah. I, that's what I wrote down. Like what I noted about this is like, he's having, it's fun wordplay and it's mm-hmm. very imaginary. Yeah. And he like, it's very strong images that very imaginary you know yeah I, I love that he's having fun with it yeah you know one of the other things I put down was I really like the guitar in the background yeah that song it was just very just chillaxed um it's I don't know it's just that you got these cool lyrics a decent flow you got some cool things in the background yeah. happening I really I, I yeah. was digging that song well and speaking of the guitars deep. on it is one thing I love about this record it, since I'm 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 a musician myself and like knowing from the production side of things like there's this guy named Zash who's credited who I don't know who fucking Zash is but he's the one who credited for all of the guitar parts on the whole record so oh, it's not like it's th- this is like this album reminds of like people like the true people trying to hustle and like trying to just put everything out there and it's just a few people involved like most of these songs what they're 19 songs I think 16 of them or 15 of them are just Gemini, no features. Right. And it's just him, a producer, and like one dude adding some like additional guitar. And then I'm sure Gemini like called in the alcoholics, far side, like called in all of his people that he could for it. You know, because mm-hmm. they're like hustling to put this together. But yeah, the guitar parts are all one guy on the whole yeah. the whole album. Yeah, it was cool. 
Um, but yeah, I just in the the thing at the end I mentioned earlier in the podcast, maybe that was off air, but um, I just I love that freestyle that he does at the end. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that, it's, it's just. Just the so classic like, one where it's like lo- yeah. lo-fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's like so a B-side. Smooth. Like it's almost like he's freestyling trying to figure out. Yeah. 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 It's br- super smooth. It definitely yeah. brings you back to the 90s like the Stretch and Bobbito show. Yeah. And obviously we weren't there. Like we weren't uh, old enough, you know, we were recording freestyles on tapes, you know, but we would download. Free- I remember downloading freestyles off of LimeWire, like you said before. Yeah. With like, oh shit, that's a dope freestyle. I want to have that. Like the big L freestyles. Oh like, yeah. And on the radio. For sure. Yeah. So it kind of reminded me of that, like putting that in a song. Yeah. Um, was super dope. That was cool. And then he hits us with what you sitting on. <laughs> do you know what that <laughs> refers to? Right? Yeah, dude, dude. That's that was the cool part. Is it references like he uses it in different contexts. He does. He it's, does. You know, the first part is like, <laughs> you know, hey girl, what you sitting on? A fat yeah. ass. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. Like what you sitting on? I'd be like, yo, she got she got cake under there. Like, yeah. What she sitting on? <laughs> Two midgets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but the other context that he's talking about too is just like. Hey Jim, what what are you what you sitting on right now? What you sipping on? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. exactly. So I like that. Well, me, I'm just uh, sitting here drinking some Sonoma County Rose and talking about hip hop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's what he's sitting on. Cool. Uh, but <laughs> so, but it's just cool because I might actually add that to my vocabulary. It's like, hey, man, what you sitting on? What you I know. On? <laughs> so, but you know, just talking about problems. Yeah. Like, hey man, what you sitting I think on? What's one good? of the things I loved about the song was the bass line. Yeah, it was super totally dope. Like, I love that. I love the stripped down sound, and you can really hear the bass come through and it's not muffled or hidden behind a bunch of other sounds yep I love that it's the, super dope beat I like Danger Mouse is unreal yeah on this oh no yeah, yeah. This, this is where he's going all out on his production and I think this is the this is the first song on the album where you're like you like stop and you pay attention to the production you're like whoa this mm, is right. this is some new shit mm-hmm. that like yeah I, I, I love that I love what you're sitting on yeah, the, the hook is though like it's very catchy. Well, and he's singing it yeah. too. He's, he's got a it's good, like, good voice. Like he does good hooks. Like I like his. Like hooks. he's got this kind of whiny, like playful, like little thing. And it, <laughs> what you sit now? Yeah, <laughs> and it's like so soulful. Like he's got yeah. this kind of playful, like higher voice in his in his in his rhyme schemes. But then he just like gives you hits you with that soul a little bit, you know? Yeah, you know some songs where you go and you see live and it's just your. You're just feeling you're really rocking it, yeah. but then you yeah. hear it on an album, and you're like, oh, okay. I, I, what I'm getting at is, I feel like this would be one of those ones that'd be better live. Oh, totally. That yeah. Matt and I were talking about before we started, like this whole album would be dope to see. Yeah, live. I would love to see it live. Yeah. yeah, but it's just one of those. I'm not gonna say it doesn't translate well to an album. But yeah, it's like definitely if you were there, you'd be like, oh yeah, be sick. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I can see it. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I can see it. Oh, yeah, yeah you'd definitely yeah. be vibing to that one. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, you know, and I have to say, like, one of the main elements to this album is just him hyping, like we mentioned before, just hyping himself up, coming in with that energy, keeping it the whole time. Uh, I always imagine, I don't know why it's with New York, I just imagine just coming in and just rapping about, you know, don't mess with me, whatever else. Yeah. Um, but that's what I got, you know, here. And then as we go into the fifth track, The Only One, that's a continue a continuation of going from Omega Supreme, The Only One, I'm Great. I'm cool. Yeah. I'm awesome. Right. Don't mess with me. Yeah. That, I mean, that's that that traditional New York braggadocio, uh, like street rap. You, you're going to a rap cipher and you're mm-hmm. going to kill everyone. And yeah. I'm the best here and you're going to know about it. Well, the thing I, the thing I like about that, uh, the uh, the other track we're talking about, um, the... Uh, is it get? I think it's got a pop like I got a lyric I get split spit I got a bullet in the clip. Yeah, but he's basically saying I can kill you with my words the same way I can kill you with this clip. Yeah, right. Like that's his. It's like a playful cipher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's very typical of like New York rap. Yeah, like he's in it and and he represents that on this yeah. album yeah. for sure. Yeah, but I I like the um <laughs> I put a very simple note of uh, cool beat. I really like the yeah. beat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool beat. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote that too. I wrote a really dope beat. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Would, would love to see this live. I think uh, the only one would be a really good, great song to see live as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then, you know, same kind of going through Take Care of Business, the Brooklyn, they Brooklyn shit, or that Brooklyn shit type yep. of. Um, just, you know, I always, I haven't been to Brooklyn yet, but I always just get this feel of like... Oh, it's a lot different than when this album <laughs> came out. Yeah. It's a lot different. Yeah, it's a lot different. I look around downtown, I'm like, yeah, I'm sure this is not Brooklyn at all. It's just uh, <laughs> very... Uh, but, you know, just from different albums, you just get, I mean, even from Nas, 
um, from you, you can name countless other artists. You just get the sense of the the neighborhoods that they grew in were very tough and stuff. And yeah. this track isn't any different yeah. from what he's saying. Totally, and what they're saying. So, question on this one. Yeah, you who? That's because and the thing is, what's interesting about this album too is like you try and go and you look. Like a lot of albums will have information of the samples. There's this album. That's one of the things I wanted to. Why I wanted to do it is because it's. It's kind of a shrouded in mystery, even though Danger Mouse became became one of the most successful producers of our generation. Right. Yeah, um, and eclectic, successful and eclectic, and yeah, right. I mean, there's, there's no information on the samples he's using. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I I wonder if he knew to use like very obscure samples. Yeah, like you know, it's gonna be really hard for you to even know what he's sampling. Right. Or. You know, because it was an independent album. Yeah. He just didn't list the samples. Yeah. I just hoped, you know, no one would find out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's 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 dope, though. I love that. I love when producers don't give you all the information. They don't tell you everything that they use. They yeah. kind of hide it a little bit, make you dig for it. Or if you listen to a record, then you're like, oh, shit, that, that's the sample that was on this album. Yeah, yeah. You know, you totally. have to kind of have to discover it on your own. Yeah. I like one of the things I like about this track was you know he's talking about hey you go go over there and just hit him with the you who and yeah. just get their attention mm -hmm. these girls just want to be put at ease so they be hollering yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's just kind of cool because you know you it's you're talking about yeah. like the hottest girl in the room you just yeah. go over there and it's like yeah. dude all you have to do is just go over there and be Th cool this I wrote down this was the point in the album when he starts getting a little more personal and telling his story. Yeah. He didn't start off doing that, which is I thought was interesting. Yeah. He didn't start off the album being like, This is who I am, this is how I came up, mm -hmm. this is where I'm from. There's like not a lot of that at all in the right. album. He no. he doesn't really get personal and tell his story, but he does give moments of it. Right. Like on this song when he's talking about um his story and coming up and what he's went through in the past with girls and stuff like that. Yep. He's giving a little bit of himself. Yeah. On the track. <laughs> and I feel like that's where this whole album shifts a little bit and he goes into a little bit more content. Yeah. And I feel like he's also kind of, after all this talk about his own, co you can see his confidence. I feel like he's almost kind of giving us game at the same time. Yeah. Of just saying like, dude, just go over there. They just want to be put at ease. Just talk to them, make them laugh, whatever else. Um, and it's cool. That's all. It's simple. Yeah. It's, it's easy. Probably not. But It's the fake it till you make it kind of yeah. thing like this whole album feels like a fake it till you make it yeah mm -hmm. and there are, there's a lot of irony on that because danger mouse fucking made it and yeah. gemini would have had he not you know gone to jail and like right. he he took a different he took a different route which is funny because one of the songs coming up has a lot to do with what happened with that yeah and then next one copycats this one made me think of return to the boom bap with krs1 oh, totally. yeah. because you know he's just talking about how these fake mcs coming up copping in my style um there was one even though he has no hit songs <laughs> <laughs> fake it till you make it baby yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things i like that he was putting together is him saying it's like looking in the mirror at his own reflection um, yet, you know, if you put them in your shoes, they're, they're not going to fit. So yeah. I was like, oh, okay, that's some cool imagery and wordplay and mm -hmm. just really totally. hurting someone's feelings right there. Yeah. So I liked it. Yeah, I, I love that he had the principal on the album. That is dope that he, because I think Gemini worked with them, or he principal produced one of his songs before this album. I think, you mean Gemini, one of Gemini's songs? Yeah. Yeah, I think he did. They're like long term friends. Okay. Um, but like, yeah, principal also another. Fairly unknown, right? MC. Yeah, in terms of like a solo career, yeah, he's not really known. Uh, but yeah, it was it was cool how they went back and forth on this song, totally, and just you know short little verses, but they're going back and forth yeah. and talking mm -hmm. their shit and yep, yeah, it was a dope song. Yeah, it reminds me of like those old tribal where they share a little yeah, go back and like exactly. Um, don't do drugs. I mean, the, <laughs> this song is such a funny song. <laughs> this, like, this is one of the standouts on the album yeah. for sure. And I remember, like, I, I like the song, and then I read the lyrics, and I was like, "This is hilarious." No, yeah, like, it's a total is, satire. Yeah, it's a satire on Dare, right? Because this is like he grew up on Dare 
you just grew up on Dare, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Fifth grade too. Yeah, I know, Fifth I know. Grade. That thing is such a. I mean, the, the whole failure of Dare is that you teach these kids hey, if you do drugs, you're fucked. Yeah. But then you go into high school, and then everyone's doing, doing drugs. drugs. You're like, but they're still alive. So. And then you go into college. You're like, oh, my parents are doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's like this. This song is. Um, I feel like this is the first song on the album where this album has a true identity. It's like these weird samples that are like, where the hell did this like, like, Mm -hmm. like spoken sample come from? And then where, where did the theme of this song come from? How did Danger Mouse put all the, like, this is where everything kind of coming together where it's like, doesn't really make sense, but it makes so much sense with the actual song. And the irony of this song is that that's what killed Gemini's career is like Mm. Gemini after the success of this album, you know, got caught up in our narcotic sales and went to, went to, went to jail for it. Mm. There's not a lot of backstory from it, but that's about like, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and whereas Danger Mouse took this huge leap. um, And for all we know, Gemini could have been like a huge name even today. Um, And yeah, Danger Mouse could have, you know, had brought him up with him and had him a featured MC on all of his albums that he produced for other artists. Yeah. And just had his name always out there. Mm -hmm. And then doing a sequel, a follow-up album to this. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, with that said, this is a really funny track. I mean, that, so good like the oh, hook yeah. is hilarious and then when he's referencing like Whitney's chilling Bobby's he's chilling let's, let's get, get high because we, we love, love the feeling, feeling. <laughs> that's hilarious Bobby and Whitney yeah. reference that's messed up man dude it's fucked up that's <laughs> not now okay. it is yeah for sure that's yeah. not okay yeah <laughs> but you you mentioning that he got arrested for selling drugs with this song in mind it's almost as if he didn't take it seriously or or didn't think about the repercussions of uh, that, or he's just kind of making light of it but i mean if you're living that ghetto pop life you're not yeah. gonna get caught you're <laughs> impervious <laughs> totally. to that you know yeah. so it's not gonna happen to him well and it was funny because like i'm listening to this album when i'm like 15 or 16 when is when i was first <clears throat> when i started doing drugs i think i smoked weed for the first time i was like 12 or 13 but like but this is the first time where I'm like actually getting into drugs. Mm-hmm. And so as you're like 15, 16 year old self, you're like, yeah, <laughs> don't do drugs. I'll do it. That's the I'll tell us, but I'm doing it right now. I'm doing a song, right. you know? And it's like, it's the whole irony within itself on this one. And, um, uh, it's, this is, this is one of the standout songs for sure for me. And it's, it's yeah. all, there's so many on here that are commentary on the war on drugs. Mm-hmm. And like, like Bush boys brings up the war on drugs too. Dude, um, yeah, yeah. That's when it starts. I mean, before we get into Bush Boys, it was medieval, medieval. and I liked the. It was a very medieval beat. Yeah, d- yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh, that's cool. You know what? You know, I have a theory on this song. So, do you guys make? Do you guys produce music ever? Producer in music? No. So, no. not yet. <laughs> yeah, good answer. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, great answer. <laughs> uh, but so most producers, most most artists, when they're building something, like you're building a beat. You always name it something because you're going to save the file. Oh, yeah. But the song's not built yet. And it's usually like a, a, a sound association with words. So, like, I'll have, like, I've had songs where I've, I've named it, like, bubblegum or whatever because that sounds like kind of like, or like, I don't know, there's sounds of it there. And so this, I think my theory is that. That he made this beat, saved it as medieval because it's like a medieval beat, <laughs> and then they just kept that. Yeah, really, like just went with it. it. We're gonna yeah. leave it the way it is. Yeah. And no, it's. It, <clears throat> I loved how they had the far side featured on this, and I loved how far side stayed on topic of the medieval themes and referencing stuff in the medieval times, mm-hmm. and then applying it to today. Yep. And how they're gonna, whatever to other MCs and stuff like that, using totally. medieval terms. Yep. It was super cool. They. they Stay and the far side is on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the far side. That I, I mean, I didn't look at the features, but that actually was kind of a it was a nice surprise for me to totally. see the far side on. I was like, yeah. oh, cool, that's dope. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, but and as you were getting into the next track was Bush Boys. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. for me, like this whole album, 
again been on repeat just him building himself up but then it was like this weird transition for me yep. of you know now we we got political for a second now. totally um i th- you know there was a couple things in there i thought were kind of cool uh some things that i share as well one of the first notes i put you know that he said was surprised that blacks call themselves republicans right and so i agree with that so yeah. on on occasion um and you know things like that also talking about because this you know 2004 this is when we were having our things with the uh, you know the twin towers just went down the year before or the same year depending on the release and the extended release um but you know talking about how we want to send our our kids to war we're convinced that they have weapons of mass destruction but then he talks about how we haven't even found the killers to biggie and Pac yet but right. you're so convinced that we have these yeah. weapons so um and this song the way it ends was kind of crazy because he's talking about how we're as a nation we want to maintain peace and so i have to, you know i'll i'll speak for myself on this one but you definitely sometimes i feel like our media paints this picture of other countries as like just on fire there's gunfire everywhere they're totally shitty they're fifth world countries or whatever else but that may not be the case i don't think that's always the case either when at the end of this track he has it you know he has bush talking and then it forwards to iraq and it's just kids playing yeah. it's kids playing totally and it's not like iraq doesn't have kids so it's an easy picture to imagine but then these planes go over and these bombs drop yeah and then it goes into talking about peace again and so i just thought that it was a cool track that kind of came out of nowhere for me but mm-hmm. it was kind of so cool to see him go serious right. for a second so yeah, I, I think it fits into the album just in the sense of he has mentioned a few things earlier on in the album, but then he takes it to a whole other level with Bush Boys, and it kind of takes you out of the fun for a little bit, mm-hmm. and it's like, all right, let's get serious, and let's talk about real things that are going on, and I think it's interesting that he doesn't stay in New York with his political views. He's looking at a worldview of uh, there's injustice going on in other nations, like in Iraq, the Iraqi war and how that's affecting them. He's not just thinking about New York and what's happening there. He's looking at a broad view of yeah. it. Yeah, and another surprise for me is because, you know, I hadn't heard of this album, so listening to it in 2020 and oh. looking at the album, I was mm-hmm. like, what is Bush Boys going to be about? And so I'm sure it'd make, it would have made more sense to me had I listened mm-hmm. to it years ago. But I was like, oh, okay. This is about President Bush. This is mm-hmm. about people that are following along the, line, the same lines as what he's doing. Right. Well, it's it's interesting because this 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 uh, this song got kind of panned when the album came out. So the the album surprisingly came out to fairly good critical acclaim, but they never it never took off because both Danger Mouse and Gemini were fairly unknown. Mm-hmm. So this um, although the album came out to pretty strong c- c- critical acclaim, uh, this album, however, or this track, however. Got, got kind of panned. Um, reason being is like what we've kind of already talked about is that the whole album did not really digging into deeper subjects mm-hmm. and that this just... The critics said that it fell flat in the record because there's no political lead up to this. It's kind of just like what everyone else is saying about Bush, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But like you said, listening to it now in 2020, it's funny to like look back this is 17 years ago and like it's like all the same right. issues it's all the same Nothing concerns yeah. and, we've and we've talked and we've mentioned that quite yeah. a bit too where it's it's cool that they that artists do that because it makes it age well mm-hmm. so we can go back it's it's bittersweet in a sense because you go back and it's like oh this is a hot topic back then mm-hmm. But shit, it's still relevant. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. It's way so relevant. We did it on a few albums. Mm-hmm. Looking back at Tupac's Tupacalypse Now, mm-hmm. a lot of politically charged music. You can release that, that album now. Today. What's yep. going on Relate. today? Totally. Uh, Soul Food, <clears throat> they talk a lot about it, injustices and stuff like that. That's very relatable to today as well. So you're right. You're right. I think that allows it, the album, to have value later on and has depth that you can go back and listen to 10, 20 years later and pull something from it. Yeah. And get something from it. It's not like an MC Hammer album where if we listen to that now, we're not going to be able to pull much from it. Right. You know, it's very much for that moment and for that time period. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, to involve the next track a little bit too, because he, he goes in deep again. Um, here we go again. And right. so 
Um, one of the lines that stood out was him talking about how Republicans tell folks to pull themselves up by the bootstrap, but then identifying all these issues. So he talks about, you know, relationship issues, how women want love, men want sex. Mm -hmm. um, he talks about the prison industrial complex. He, he brings up dirty water. And Flint, Michigan hadn't happened yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. you know, and he, the, an interesting idea he brings up is that we are a very individualistic society. We're very much about, he mentioned self-preservation. And so we're about self-preservation, but then at the same time, we're crabs in a barrel where we don't, if we see someone, we don't help in a reverse effect. We don't really help the next person get up. Instead of bringing them down, we just don't help them up. Mm -hmm. Um and so I just saw that as another substantial track in addition to um, Bush Boys to right. kind of segue, keep further add on to it. I thought that one was cool too. Totally. Mm -hmm. And I, I've mentioned, I mentioned this once earlier and I don't know why, but looking back on this, I, I so many times think there's so many precursors in this album to uh, like, it mirrors a lot of what happened with in Kanye's career for for whatever reason my brain always goes there this is before the uh, George Bush doesn't care about black people comment you know mm -hmm. Kanye took that stance in these in these uh, he has a line I think it's either in Bush Boys or Here We Go Again where I think it might be Bush Boys where it says uh, Republican Democrat one and the same mm -hmm. right? um, and that's and now th th this was Kanye was doing the whole black uh, um Bush doesn't care about black people, and now he's f fucking a, a Trump supporter and like hanging out with Trump, and it's like blurring those lines. And the the whole D "Don't Do Drugs" song reminds me of uh, "Stack Your Money Till It Gets Sky High." Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's there's there's like a lot of themes that seem to like I don't know why, but like not just with the style of of the song, and also Kanye singing a lot of his own. Hooks, a lot of MCs never really did that a lot right. until he came around, and now everybody fucking does that. Mm -hmm. Like, Chance is famous because he can't really sing, but you can still like his, he, he still kind of can sing, you know what I mean? Yeah, and what's the one you keep re saying? Um, what's it? Post Malone. Like, he yeah. even out outwardly says he, he doesn't rap. Yeah. Uh, no, know. people call him a rapper, and it's like, yeah. Right. He's just singing, all of, yeah. haphazardly singing. All these lyrics totally. where it's kind of blurred yeah. between rapping and singing. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, that's a really interesting connection that you made. Yeah, with Kanye, because uh, this kind of came out around the same time when Kanye was starting to blow up and make his make his impact on the the hip hop world. Uh, I got the perfect song for the kids to sing. Tom Young doing just to get by. <laughs> Solid album. Um, right. I gotta be honest I don't I'm a do me the next one yeah uh, like it's funny because it's like similar theme to so many of these other songs where he's mm -hmm. just like you make it fake it till you make it mm -hmm. this is right. this is one of the least memorable songs for me on the record hmm. um, why why so I think it's just one of those ones that gets caught in between because like I really love Knuckle Sandwich, which is the next song. Mm -hmm. And my favorite song on the record is not have we haven't even talked about it. It's still it's still coming up. Um, but no, I don't know. It's just one of those songs that kind of got lost for me. What What are your thoughts? Yeah, it actually put down. I think I lost interest in the song because my note was "Listen Again." Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, it, it just it didn't. I, I lost focus at some point. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I need to. Listen it's a to slower this beat. It's a little bit more mellow compared yep. to the the previous tracks and the whole album. Uh, and he's talking more about women and groupies and dealing with that of you know, going to play a show and then you got to deal with the girls and that whole, you know, the tribulations of trying to have a relationship. But then he's kind of being controlling where he tells the girl, hey, you're not allowed to sleep with anyone, but he kind of can yeah. because he's famous and he's a rapper so you know uh, kind of puts himself above the girl that's the trap bit. okay yeah. um it's also he's I, I got the feel too that he was in a relationship and it's him i'm out here messing around i don't want you to do that as well either. absolutely i want you to still do yeah. i'm gonna do me but you also need to do yourself too but don't follow yep. that footsteps so that yeah. was one of the it's towards the end but that's the message i got from that mm -hmm. overall so i don't know i don't know if it's for me that it kind of fell off from what he was preaching about throughout the album and now it just you know 
further being further serious from the other two tracks, mm-hmm. but I, I fell off a little bit around yeah. that one. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is one of those albums where remember you used to get an album and you'd be like, oh, it's got twenty five songs on it. This is a lesson in like where you could trim it down a little tri- bit. like keep 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 some for some seaside. Right. Shit. So <laughs> that was gonna be my next question coming up is that as we said. The themes in this song, in this album, repeat a lot. A lot. There's 19 tracks. Yep. Is this album too long for the content that he talks about? So, yes. Overall, yes. Also, keep in mind it was originally 16 songs. Okay. So the last three songs, which are "What You Sitting On" remix, "The mm-hmm. Shit," um, "Ghetto Pop Life 2, those were all in the. They re-released it, and those are like the, it's the extended version. But overall, yes, it is. Mm. Um, At what point for you, Jim? Did you kind of be like, "All right, I've heard it. Um, I've heard this. Let's say I've heard this two or three times in the first couple tracks." It's not to say we like this album, but like, yeah. when did you say you would you began to maybe teeter a little bit? Like, okay, I've heard this already. Okay. Um, I with if things like that I so one of my best friends and uh, who's still one of my best friends um, from back home he's a musician as well he and I um, he and I we loved this album and we were obsessed over this album and but he and I always had different takes on music especially as musicians he was always of the belief that Lyrics are fifty percent of the song, if not more. And I, I've never. You can probably, if you ever listen to my music, I don't. I, I don't really go that deep with a lot of my my lyrics. For me, I've always been attracted to the f- feel of a song, how it matches with the production, how it matches with the feel, how it matches with the charisma of the artist. Um, and so for me, I, I can recognize that, but it wasn't a deterrent for me with this record. Okay. Um, I don't need to remain engaged by having a clear theme. I need to remain engaged by having all of the, all of the elements of it remain cohesive. Mm -hmm. And this, this album has an identity to me and I, I, um, I adhere to that identity more so than feeling like there needs to be a specific theme that we're following. Do you feel like Danger Mouse carried the load for the most part in terms of that, of keeping it all cohesive and bringing everything together? Yes, yes in some ways. I'm a big believer uh, of producers are greatly responsible for some of our favorite songs. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm also a believer that an amazing artist can make an okay beat fire. Right. But so, so, like, I I don't really like Drake all that much. I mean, I, there are songs of, of, of Drake's that I really enjoy and they're super catchy. But Drake is an example of me, of somebody who doesn't have... who It's, it's more he's got a certain style that people really like that he can mm-hmm. put on almost any beat and make it sound good. Right. And you can pull some, so many different influences and different types of beats. Right. And But and whereas Danger own... Mouse can make anyone sound good with his beats. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Drake can make any producer sound mm-hmm. good with his style. Um, I think Danger mm-hmm. Mouse fits in that right. With what you said, thinking about that, I don't know if if it was another producer or if he had a multitude of different producers on this album, it would be as great. I don't, maybe we would get tired of the topics coming up over again. Yeah. But I think because the music is so it's great, cohesive. he makes it with the samples that he uses and how he ties in all the tracks together with the sounds It makes it more cohesive and makes us interested in the songs. Yep. We want to stay locked in. Yeah, I agree with you uh, quite a bit. When I'm listening to an album, I'm listening to the vibes, the beats, and everything that I get, and just kind of getting that feel for it. But then I go into, depending on the artist, but then I go into, what are they giving me a message? What am I listening for? Yeah. When you are talking about, you know, hey, I'm just into the vibes, like I don't necessarily need the, the lyrics to keep me engaged. Like, And I respect, I like that a lot. It made me think of Craig Mack. 
uh, Craig Mack flavor in your ear. Like he's not a like he's not giving you anything compelling to listen to. No. but he's catchy and he sounds good. Exactly. Um, so I, that's one of the artists that I thought of in that sense. I was, I think of um, of um, Mark Morrison too. Yep. Yeah, it's another good example. Mm. So a knuckle sandwich. I mean, it's it's a dope song. I love I love the beat. Style um, so sick, they'll need medication. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm all. Yeah. I like that. So, but I mean, but that's. I like that one. That was a cool yeah. track. Um, the, the remix is coming up. So you mentioned that the it was originally third. 14, 16, 16 songs and then it ended with Knuckle Sandwich that was the last song okay then the extended version is has these last three songs on there and so there's that remix of what you're sitting on with CeeLo on mm-hmm. it I so, like the original see, one better I like the original one better he, he likes the I remix like the better CeeLo. Really? I really yeah. CeeLo killed it I like yeah. the original see I like the original better too <laughs> so like so it, so we talked about uh, Soul Food earlier Goody Mob yeah. Cool connection with this album and mm-hmm. Goody Mob outside of the obvious that Danger Mouse created Gnarls Barkley, which is half Danger Mouse, half CeeLo. Yeah. CeeLo or uh, Danger Mouse got on the map because he he submitted to a talent show in 1998 at the University of Georgia, which is, I believe, where he was going to school at the time. He submitted to a t- uh, like a talent show, won the talent show, and his prize was opening up for like the fall concert series, which was Goody Mob and um Oh shit. Uh it was Goody Mob and somebody else. Oh, I gotta look it up. Um Oh, it's gonna kill me. But Go- Goody Mob was in it and in at the show, he gave CeeLo like a mix CD of some of his instrumentals and his beats. Damn. And then this is the first song they actually did together. Because mm-hmm. CeeLo saw what he did by putting out Ghetto Pop Life. <clears throat> yeah. He's like, this is kind of dope. I kind of feel you. And if you think about it, you think about Niles Barkley and CeeLo's Cee- style. Yeah. Very similar to Gemini and how this album feels too. Mm-hmm. So CeeLo yeah. saw that shit. He's like, oh, let me get on that. Let me get on that was one song. And then they, right after this is when when Niles Barkley was, was born. Right. Then they started working on that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, I love the remix. I wrote down very dope track to play while driving, like blasting yeah. it with your windows down. It's a fun song. I'm like, <laughs> I can't see it, but I'm shaking my head. I'm just like, <laughs> I like it could have cut that one out and been fine with it, but it is yeah. what it is. Um, so, but you know, with going on to the shit, this is I, my favorite song on the entire album. So you know what? I actually, I'm not gonna <laughs> say I don't like this track. Okay. But the beginning of the track, though. Yeah. I can't, oh, I can't describe music, obviously. But the way it started, I was like, oh, this beat's going to be sick. And then it wasn't... It's used in parts of the song, not all the way through. And I was kind of disappointed because mm. I really liked the way that it sounded. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's a good song, though. I just this wish that, that part song, was used. Uh, no matter what, no matter what... And this might get me in trouble if anyone listens to this that is a bad influence on me. But no matter what, no matter how I'm feeling, like no matter how shit I'm feeling... Someone puts that track on, and it's like, all right, let's take shots. Let's do this shit, baby. I'm ready. I'm on. Let's go. And so, like, this is that song where no matter what, like, any time the song comes on, I'm just like, mmm. Yeah, you're hyped. Dude, that song gets me hyped. This is my yeah. this is my getting ready yeah, to go out. Like, I'm yeah. pre-gaming, getting ready to go out. And I just love the, like, call and response with himself. He's literally doing a call and response with himself. Who's the shit? I'm the shit. Who's the yeah. shit? I'm the shit. I'm a bad <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> and the hit don't know me. Yeah, I did. I did like it. Yeah, but his singing's great on it too. I yeah. love the singing on yeah, it. That's a, that little bit that he throws in there. Uh, definitely, I think a new style for that time. Not, yep. not many other MCs were doing that. No. Nope. Maybe most deaf, but I don't know. If black and both sides have come out yet. At that time, maybe it did. When did Black on Both Sides come If that was in 2002, it was 2003. Yeah, I think it was around the same time. Okay, because most dev does that, and he does it really well. Came out, actually, whoa, came out in 99. Mm. So okay. yeah, definitely came out before. So maybe, I mean, Gemini wasn't the first one, but very few artists were, were doing that. Yeah. So you're saying you weren't really feeling this song as much as, as, much as I do, huh? 
No, was or was not? <laughs> or in general, in general. No, I like, yeah, I like the song. Um, I just, yeah, my only... You wanted go, that... I just that wanted that, the like. first part, the first, like, 15 seconds of the song, I wanted that more throughout yeah. it, because okay. I just, I really liked it. Um, so that was my only complaint. Other than that, I liked it. So, and then, Ghetto Pop Life 2. I just, I just, <laughs> I just love the line of the, um... I'm a bad motherfucker, son of a bitch. I'm still the son of God. All up in your synagogue. Yeah, all up in your synagogue. I might say that. <laughs> if you think I give a fuck about you, you're gonna get offended by the fact that I'm gonna bring the bitch about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like good, these yeah. lines are just like. He's hilarious. Oh, they're so yeah. funny, and they're like, and he's just fucking with you. Yeah. Like he's fucking with you. The whole album. Yeah. Yeah. I like. Respect for sure. I just can't understand how, to me, this song is the best song on the whole album, and it wasn't included and in the yeah, original track list. Hmm. I don't understand. Like, how did a song but like "I'm a Do Me" sometimes. get on there? But the, yeah. I have the shit. Yeah. That... I think that happens sometimes. Sometimes random songs that are released or singles or whatever, like B sides, and those can be your favorite songs. They're almost yeah. always right. Yeah. Producers and artists are almost always right to put it on a B side. Sometimes yeah. they're wrong. I think a lot of those times it happens because of the label. The A&R or whatever is like, no, you can't put that out as a single. Yeah. We don't want that out there. That shouldn't be on the album. I mean, and then the artist is just like, fuck it, I'm going to put it on the B-side. And yeah. then it's, everyone loves it. It yeah. definitely fit with the yeah. rest of the album, so I don't know why that wouldn't have been included. Totally. But maybe they yeah. haven't finished it yet. You know, yeah. and then Oh, sam- or, yeah, the getting uh, samples cleared and stuff. But yeah, but then we end with the Ghetto Pop Life too. You know, yeah. the, what I put down was it's just a, it was just a mellow beat, super smooth. But yeah. it sounded super similar to the original song. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't know. I feel like that almost kind of puts a stamp on when you have the title track and like this is this is right. my life. This is what you've been hearing. The book ends it. Yeah, kind of ends on the same note that which mm-hmm. it started. So, actually, I almost started second track, but um, I liked it. It was cool. But yeah, it was a it was a cool album overall, and it was a nice listen. Like I said, I I hadn't heard it before, um, and it, I'm trying to think of so different. Oh shit! The concert that he opened up for, the concert he opened up for was Goody Mob. Guess the other one. Is another southern artist. Ye- yes. Outcast? Yes. I was going to guess, man. <laughs> Dude, bro, he opened up in 98. In 98. Some unknown, this came out 2003. Unknown producer in Georgia. Just in at, Yeah. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> Dude, man. Goody Dave Mob has a crazy and Outcast. Ass story. Yeah. Could you imagine, bro? That's that a cool crazy. come up, man. Because, you know, I was reading a little bit more about him. And, like, he's been nominated for 22 Grammys and won six. One, five, six, six, yeah. And one, six. But just that come up is cool. The open up for Outkast and Goody Mob. Mm-hmm. And the mixtape. The, yeah. Start a group with, with CeeLo. With <laughs> After he was transitioning out of his Totally. Bed, um, Absolutely. Out of Goody Mob. Does an album with MF Doom. Yeah, and but then he goes into alt rock. That's a great Andy album. Rock. Which that's a great album yeah. too. That's great such album. a great album. And the Danger thing, Doom. And the thing, as I mentioned in the beginning, that I really respect about him when we were talking about with DJ Premier as well too, is that he's not just sticking to one genre. He's right. not. He's worked with Red Hot Chili Peppers. He's worked with Gorillaz. He's Adele. worked with Nora Jones. He's worked with Adele. He's worked with ASAP Rocky. Uh, um, some of his. Uh, he's he's worked like with Beck. Mark. He's worked with yeah. Beck. Yeah. He, he he's made some of my favorite Black Key songs ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was the lead producer on Attack and Release, which is m- mm-hmm. my favorite Black Key He's almost like Key a modern song. day Rick Rubin. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Very he, similar. He almost followed in that footsteps. So Reminds me of Mark Ronson, off, too. Yeah, starting off oh, with yeah. hip hop and then branching out into other genres because other genres maybe they're gotten stale and if you bring a hip hop element to them exactly you're gonna you're gonna create way different music that's gonna be really impactful yep so that, really interesting that he was able to do that digging deep into Danger Mouse brings up some good little treasures hmm. oh yeah take a look Cause yeah I mean it's it's for me a lot of these artists like once you do the podcast and you want to go into these rabbit holes and check them out so you know I didn't I didn't realize that Danger Mouse did the white album and I have it on my phone um, I've listened to that the gray album the gray, gray album my bad yeah uh, gray album and so it's cool you man. have it on your phone mm-hmm. I have it it doesn't say by Danger Mouse 
No, I don't think so. I had to wait. What do you have it on? Like on? I don't think it's on streaming services, is it? No, no, he downloaded it. Well, you downloaded it for this. Yeah, yeah. So I have it under. I mean, that's that album is sick, dude. That album is sick. So one thing I discovered while uh, researching a little bit for this, um, um, to like kind of wrap everything up, um, I did notice that uh, Gemini. Apparently has changed his name mm-hmm. in 2014 to Big City, mm-hmm. and that he's cool. currently working on new projects. Apparently, and is shopping a documentary about ghetto pop life to uh, called Mice and Men. Oh <laughs> to, yeah, <laughs> to, to, to okay. like trying to get it bought. This documentary about the making of ghetto pop life. Yeah. I would so, love to see that. I would love to see That'd that. Be super cool. Yeah. I mean, that, but that's a long time ago. Who knows where it's at now? Exactly. And the last I've heard, I've read, because I, I tried finding him There's on social media. There's nothing about it. I searched uh, his name on Twitter and, and someone had actually just recently written an article about him. Really? I'll try to find it and send it to you. Yeah. Like a couple months ago. Because he felt They wrote about this album and they, they wrote about Gemini and um, they found out that he was in artist management right now interesting so he's managing artists and, and working with them so he's still kind of connected to to the music industry but not necessarily rapping I don't hmm. think hmm. but it would be super cool if you, to see him make a comeback yeah he's got talent he was there yeah well yeah well, so, so yeah you know, amazing to have Jim Tower or James Tower on our on same our podcast. thing Jim James um, and it's not spelled how you think it is. It's T A U G H E R. Yeah. Um, it's like so, tougher, but with an A instead of an A. Yeah. So you can find him on Instagram, uh, Spotify. Spotify. Definitely check out his music. Uh, it's not hip hop, but it's still dope music, and you'll enjoy it. And who knows? Maybe we'll we'll get some James Tower raps. Yeah, that's but before dope. we head out though, too, like Jim. So I mean, I know that one of the tracks that's your hype song. You're getting another shot, ready to go. But who are you playing this album for? Mm-hmm. Like, if you are just, right. yeah, I know you. So mentioned- we we have this thing on this podcast where we're not a review podcast. We're not here to tell the listener if this is an eight out of ten album. Mm-hmm. But we do at the end. We'll say, hey. I love this album so much, I'm gonna play this for everyone. Or it's a pretty cool album, I don't know if I'm playing this for everyone, I might play it for a specific person. Or this is an album I'm just gonna to keep to myself, I'm not really gonna play it for anyone else. So it's kind of cool because then it just kind of gives you the feel of like when, if you've never heard it before, when would be a good setting to hear it? Or when, mm-hmm. is this something that you would recommend to someone? Or right. is it just for yourself? So for you, like, you recommended it when you're working at Tower Records. You obviously still listen to it, it's one of your tops. but. How do you know when to suggest it to somebody else? Probably recommend it to white girls drinking rosé in the vineyard. <laughs> With their gladiator <laughs> shoes and a floral dress and their right. aviator sunglasses. Yeah. No, the, one of the reasons, it's funny that you, you say that because that uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do this is because this, this podcast that you guys are working on is a hip-hop head podcast. Like a, like a sneaker head Hip hop head. These are people who like like to dig deep into shit. Mm-hmm. Those are the people I recommend for this album because it has interesting history to it. Danger Mouse kind of changed the landscape of production when he first came out, and this is like the precursor to that. This has a lot of interesting elements to it that I feel like anyone that is a hip hop fan of mm-hmm. modern day or of past days. Uh, can find appreciation in this album to some degree. It's obviously not the deepest, uh, most right. ins- like the heaviest. I mean, I could have. There are tons of other albums I could have picked to want to do this with you guys that like are are more profound by f- way more profound than this album. I wouldn't call this album profound. I think that it is um, a hype, fun album that. Um, Everyone can find kind of find certain elements, but I think like the underground hip hop head is the person that I play this yeah, for. Yeah, this album definitely brought me back to when I was in high school and just digging. Every day I'd come home and just dig. Yeah. Hip on the forums and just research and you know really study hip hop and learn about all the different artists that are around. This brought me back to that because yeah. I know I would have loved this album back then and, yeah. and been so stoked to. Have be able to oh shit I found this album and no one else really knows about it yeah and this and also this is this is back when 
you couldn't just like listen to the song on YouTube first or right. go and listen to this song like hear it on Spotify first or hear it on, like no you'd have to commit to spending like 20 bucks mm -hmm. and you're like this album could fucking suck right. and you'd actually be going through things to go through mm -hmm. it and so um, I don't know this this is an album that always reminds me of why I love hip hop in general um, uh, because you can get two unlikely characters and make something mm -hmm. epic like this and and just all the sounds in this record um uh, it's yeah hip-hop heads short answer yeah who, who are you playing this for you know what i'm playing it uh i say this a lot but i'm playing it background wise you know i'm playing it on trips yeah. um i'm playing it i like to play songs in backgrounds like if we're all I think of uh, for a work event we were playing spoons and we had Wu Tang Clan on in the background. It's yeah. like a, it's a highlight for it. But this is something I play in the background. It's like I'm mm -hmm. doing something because you don't have to. You don't have, have to, to listen sit to the lyrics. Listen to, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, it's just it's just a cool vibe. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool. So that's where the setting that I'm gonna play. Yeah, then, just kind of kicking it. I agree. I for me this is an album I'm playing. Uh, like you said, for heads or people I know that will appreciate the production and. and um, how hip hop it is and, and it brings you back to the 90s hip hop era uh, for me I'm playing this album like just for myself of, like if I'm making dinner at home and I, I just want to put on a dope album just to like vibe out to and not have to think so much about the lyrics like I'm not diving too deep in what they're saying I'm just vibing out to the whole album and the whole sound of it and there are going to be songs that get me hyped and there's going to be songs that make me laugh and yeah, so that, that's what I'm going to do with it. Yeah. I like it. But, Jim, thanks for... Thanks for having me on. Yes, yeah, man. thank you yeah. to Jim James Tower for joining us on the podcast. Uh, you can follow us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Interact with us. If, uh, share with us your rap thoughts. We want to hear from you guys. Let us know what you guys think about this album. Uh, and yeah, we look forward to the next album with you guys.